hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel today guys i'll be checking out this interesting video from michael knows and it's titled walk black woman claims being on time is white supremacy you guys i'm excited for this if i had to subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and all that good stuff and without much ado let's see what this video is all about there's a racial justice advocate who's gone viral thanks to our friend over there at libs of tiktok she's gone viral for explaining to her audience why showing up on time is white supremacy as a racial justice advocate i'm often invited to give talks or to do workshops where i talk to white people about race a big part of my practice is to offer real life stories, examples, that type of thing that help white people to be able to identify white supremacy in everyday life. My husband's family is white and I often use the cultural differences between my family and his family as a way to help white people see their whiteness. There's one example that I use that always gets a ton of pushback. My husband and I were late to our first Thanksgiving with his family. I say late because it started at 12. We got there at 12.10, but whenever we got there at 12.10, everybody was already sat down and eating. I didn't know that. I use this illustration to point out that different cultures have different understandings of time, lateness, and what it means to be polite. Without fail, a white person will push back and say that lateness is impolite. I always use this as a teachable moment. I usually ask a series of pointed questions that challenge their assumptions. Sometimes it takes a lot of work. But by the end, they're able to identify how white cultural dominance works in this one small area of life, which opens the door for them to start peeling the onion. Okay, we've all seen this video a million times. Not this exact video, but versions of this video with versions of this woman. So what's it about? Why? Why are people being so mean to the white people? Why is so now you're saying that just showing up on time is white supremacy? Why? Why is this okay. woman doing this? You know why this woman's doing this? Because her white audience wants her to. That's why. Mm. <laughs> Really, we cannot blame the black there. people, yeah. even the BLM activists for this. They are giving their audience what they want. Mm -hmm. Who is this woman's audience? This woman's audience is liberal white people. Mm. Her job is to go to liberal white people and make them feel guilty, and then they pay her money for that. It's, it's like uh, a dominatrix who has a bunch of weirdo clients who want her to beat, beat them up or so whip them with chains or something. That's what this is. And she gives the audience what they want. The customer is always right. This woman obviously doesn't hate white people because this woman's husband is, is white. white. Yeah. Or at the very least, the, the woman's husband was adopted by a white family, right? She says, my husband's family is white, which means either he's white or he's adopted and he's, and he's culturally white. Either way, though, she's got a lot of familiarity with, with white culture and white people, and she involves herself in them. She probably spends most of her time with white people because the people she works with are white, and the people that she has her romantic life with are broadly white. So it's not that she hates that. She, she's mow mowing the flat catchers because they're asking her to. That's what this is really about. Th this is about a masochistic perversion. And, you know, we, we talk a, a lot about perversions in our culture because we live in a very perverted and decadent time. Yeah. But this is just another example of it. This is just another example of people de desiring something that is harmful to them, ultimately bad for them, but they want it anyway. Mm -hmm. Just like someone who's a bit fat wants more candy bars than, than he ought to have. Just like uh, someone who is sexually decadent wants all sorts of uh, sterile and hedonistic sexual <laughs> uh, activities. Uh, so too with the racial grievance. Mm -hmm. This this is entirely about masochistic white. If the white people stopped being masochistic, if the white liberals stopped feeling guilty for the color of their skin, this whole industry would disappear overnight. That's true. All of the BLM stuff, all the George, it would disappear mm -hmm. overnight. That's true. But it's still here because the audience wants it. Why wow, you guys, I totally agree with what Michael Nose said in this video. What are your thoughts? Leave them in the comment section down below and let's continue watching you guys. A lot of people are scratching their heads over a Trump truth social post that came out yesterday. And it was a it was a picture. Half the screen is Elvis Presley and half the screen is Donald Trump. <laughs> what and is uh, this? the tweet it says uh, <laughs> uh, lots of people have said that uh, I look a lot like Elvis. For so many years, 
Many people have been saying that. What do you think? People are scratching. What? What is he even talking about? This is beyond <laughs> policy. Wow. This is my favorite part of Trump's political style. <laughs> because this kind of a post is funny. It's weird. Very weird. And it's totally disarming. Mm-hmm. The, the libs have to respond to it. It drives them crazy. And they have to call him an idiot and they have to call him distracted. But the, the thing that the libs are most upset about when it comes to these sorts of posts, and Trump makes them all the time, is that it, it makes it much harder for them to portray Trump as Hitler. This levity, this, this kind of <laughs> bizarre little show, it makes it very hard. Hitler doesn't make a post like that. Yeah. Hitler never does the picture where it's half Hitler, half Elvis, or half, I don't know. I don't know who the singer would be in those days. Half, um, I actually don't, I actually don't know who would be the Mills brothers or something. Probably not. Uh, that doesn't happen, right? Trump has this bit of levity and it, this is something that a lot of the critics that Trump has driven mad don't really understand is that they see Trump as being this totally narcissistic, self-serious guy. He's not self-serious at all. And even below that level of braggadocio, you know, he puts his name in gold letters on buildings and he talks about how great he is. Below that, Trump seems to me to demonstrate more humility than most politicians. I was reminded of this. That's true, yeah. When the Brett Kavanaugh hearing was going on. And remember Ju Justice Kavanaugh he was asked about a party he went to in high school when he was 16 or something. They said, did you drink beer in high school, Justice Kavanaugh? And he said, oh, I like beer. Yeah, I drink beer. And they asked President Trump about this. And he gave what I felt was the perfect answer. I can honestly say I never had a beer in my life. OK, right. It's one of my only good traits. I don't drink. <laughs> Whenever they're looking for something good, I say I never had a glass of alcohol. I've never had alcohol. I've just, you know, for whatever reason. Can you imagine if I had what a mess I'd be? Would I be the, I'd be the world's worst? It's <laughs> a great line. Wow. And you hear a lot of those this kind of lines from so Trump, funny. right? Which, I'm the greatest, I'm the smartest, only I can save the country. But then you get this bit, he goes, look, I can say I'm probably the only person who can say I've never had beer in my life. It's the only good thing you can say about me. It's my only good trait. Could you imagine if I had beer? I'd be the worst. I'd be, could you imagine? Right? That's yeah. an example of humility. Mm -hmm. It's self-effacing. Wow, you guys, don't we all just love Donald Trump? This man is filled with humor and at the same time, he knows exactly what he's doing. We like a president who is playful sometimes and also very serious at the same time. I love that statement that Trump gave. It was very, very funny and oh my God, it really cracked me up. And you guys, let's wrap this video up. A lot of the braggadocio is just the, New Yorkers are, are better able to spot this kind of thing from Trump. I remember in 2016 when Trump came onto the scene really as a prominent candidate and everyone in the conservative movement hated him. Drew Clavin and I were two of the only people who said, oh, I don't know, he's kind of kind of, he's kind of funny. I kind of like him. No coincidence, I think, that Drew and I both grew up in New York, and this is how New Yorkers talk. And it's, it's just, it's fun. I like it. it. The Weird Elvis post, it reveals the man to be human. That, that post was not written by political consultants, okay? He was probably just batting it around one day, even even if it were written by political consultants, it, it's it's funny, it's weird, it's it's just it's not yeah, the kind of thing that true. any mm -hmm. other politician posts. It makes you mm -hmm. think this guy's human. We know he writes his own tweets back when he was on Twitter. We know he writes a lot of <laughs> all caps, the misspellings, talking about Mika Brzezinski's face. And you you might say, well, that's not disciplined. It's not focused on the message. Yeah, whatever. At least I know I'm talking to a human being. That's true. And that goes a long way in politics. And whether you love the guy or whether you hate the guy. A lot of career politicians have tried to ape that style in recent years unsuccessfully. That is a, that is a kind of political talent that you pretty much cannot learn. Wow, you guys, that was such an interesting one from Michael Knowles. I really enjoyed his perspective on Donald Trump. Let me know what you guys think about this video. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.